We're here at the Democratic National Convention in Charlotte, to the year 2012. And uh, the name Shriver has been in Democratic politics for a long time, going back to the 1950s and even before that. Our guest is Mark Shriver. Save the Children is his organization. He's the son of Sergeant Shriver and a former vice presidential nominee and a great, great American. And it's great to have uh, his son here. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. It is, uh, it is a wonderful uh, day when I get to speak to a uh, member of the Kennedy Shriver clan. And, um, you know, it is, um, it is an incredible, uh, I get to see uh, Vicki Kennedy today on the way over. And the family has done so much for Special Olympics, for Save the Children, for, for helping America. What is it in the Kennedy slash Shriver um, name? What? What? Why? Why give back? Well, I think you know my mom and dad uh, never said to us you had to go into politics. I was in the Maryland legislature for eight years, or that I had to go work for Save the Children, or even do work for a Special Olympics, which my mom created. Uh, but I think when you see role models like that, that are so energized and so joyful in what they do. Uh, and it has such meaning in their lives and in other people's lives, it, it pulls you towards that work, or it did for me anyways, and my brothers and sister are all making contributions in different ways. I think it's really important, though, that folks realize that they don't have to go out and create Special Olympics or, like my dad did, the Peace Corps or Head Start Legal Services for the Poor, that there are all sorts of different ways you can make a difference in people's lives, in your community, in your, in your neighborhood, in your state. And that's what I think is it makes politics with a small piece so interesting. How do you really help the body politic move forward? And that's what I think uh, my mom and dad tried to do. They did it on a big stage, uh, but they were as good or even better in, in our home, making sure that the kids felt loved and supported. Do you think that the politics of today, um, and, you know, talking with Paul Kirk, who replaced uh, your great uh, uncle and, and Ted Kennedy, um, and... You know, he was talking about how partisan it is. I mean, this, you know, roadblock Republicanism that starts with Mitch McConnell, the leader of the opposition, basically saying he wants to make Obama a, a one-term president. And it's his most important thing, not the economy, not the foreign policy. Is this something that, you know, would, would forgive the saying, you know, have your dad and, and your uncles, you know, roll over in their graves in this kind of real anger politics? Well, I think, you know, look, elections are always tough. They've been tough since uh, America was created. Uh, you know, they've always been rough and tumble affairs. So I don't think this election is really any different than that. Um, I think what is different nowadays is after elections are over, uh, I think in the old days, uh, you know, 30, 40 years ago, people looked at what made, uh, what they had in common and what could move the country forward. My father worked very closely with Governor Romney's dad, uh, Governor Romney of Michigan, uh, on VISTA, Volunteers in Service to America. Uh, he's worked closely with Orrin Hatch and Job Corps, Mrs. Reagan on foster grandparents. Uh, so there was a sense of bipartisanship that you wanted to move the country forward. I think we've lost that. I don't think it's gone forever. Uh, I think my father, you know, uncles would be upset about that. And, you know, Teddy had a great reputation for leaning across the aisle and trying to build partnerships that would move the country forward. And I think that, unfortunately, what we focused on the media, the political leadership, leadership across the country focuses on whether you're blue or red, whether you're Christian or non-Christian, whether you're gay or straight, and what divides us as compared to what should bring us together. Because we have so much more in common, uh, but unfortunately, we've gotten to the point where we try to separate everybody and put you in corners or in, uh, in different areas, and, and that isolates people, and that's unfortunate. Final question in about 30 seconds. The scenario that uh, we face today is getting young people engaged. Uh, what is the best way, you think, to get 20-somethings involved in politics? I think social media is obviously a huge way uh, of getting people engaged. I think, you know, if you give them a good idea, people get fired up. I mean, great, there's nothing more powerful than a really good idea. Uh, and young people are making huge changes uh, all across the country and all across the world. I mean, look what happened in the Middle East came about through social media and young people getting fired up. And I hope young people get engaged, whether they're Republicans or Democrats, because it makes a huge difference uh, in moving the country forward. Thank you so much. Great to see you. Thanks. Thank you for saving the children what you're doing. Thank you very much. You're doing great work around the country. Really appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. All Thanks the best. Guys. Appreciate it.